right now I'm going to be going over how to find x-intercepts and y-intercepts of a linear function. You notice we have a line going right here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of this. All right, so let me look right here. We have a y-axis right here. So here, there's the y-axis. Right over here, we have our x-axis. And something you need to know about the y-axis is that your x-value is always equal to zero. And on your x-axis, your y-value is always equal to zero. So right now it's asking us to determine the intercepts of the line. So we're trying to find this point right here, where it crosses the y-axis. This point right here, where it crosses the x-axis. Now this point, we call it the y-intercept. All right, and the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis that has an ordered pair. It's at 0 and 15 because it's directly in between a 10 and a 20. So right here I'm going to type in 0 and a 15. Right here, that's where that line hits the x-axis, so that's called the x-intercept. So I'm going to write x intercept. So that's the y, here's the y-intercept and there's the x-intercept. And now this point is at a negative 40 and a 0. So we're going to write negative 40 and 0. And those are the ordered pairs that represent the x-intercept and that's the ordered pairs that represent the y-intercept. And that's all this is asking us to do at the moment. Okay. So I'm going to type this in. So right here, click it, type in negative 40 and a 0, and then type in a 0, and a 15. And then I'm going to hit check. All right, good job. All right, so now over here, let's go ahead and let's look at intercepts from an equation. All right, intercepts from an equation. Now, this right here is close to being in standard form. All right, standard form is ax plus by equal c. And in standard form, technically, that's always supposed to be positive, but we can still use the same method that I'm about to do. Um, right now, this is we're trying to find the x-intercept. So we, we'll have an x value and a y value, an ordered pair, and we'll have an x value here and a y value here. Now, one thing we just talked about, if we go back, if we look at this, we'll notice that for the x-intercept, the y value is a 0. And for the y-intercept, the x value is a 0. So we already know that for our x-intercept, y equals 0, and for our y-intercept, x equals 0. So that's very important that you know that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to write this down. Negative 4x plus 7y equals 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept by applying what I like to call the cover-up method. All right. So, right here you'll notice that this eraser right here looks like a big old zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for my x-intercept by making all of my y values equal to zero. So look right here. See, x-intercept, my y value is a zero. So I'm going to make all of my y values equal to zero. And what do you notice right there? You'll see that it says negative 4x equals 3. So that's what I'm going to write down. Negative 4x equals 3. And then if I divide both sides by negative 4, those cancel to a 1, and you get x equals negative 3 fourths, which is your x-intercept, negative 3 fourths. I could do the same thing to find my y-intercept. All I have to do is go over here. Notice what's your x value equal to for your y-intercept? Your x value is equal to... Zero. So let's make it all. Let's make all this equal to zero. Oh, it's kind of flickering like a ghost. There we go. So right now it's all equal to zero. So what do we see now? Seven y equals three. So we'll write it down. Seven y equals three. So what should we do to both sides? Divide both sides by seven, and y equals three sevenths which means our y-intercept is 0, 3, 7. And voila, you're done. So let's type that in, see what happens.
I've got a negative 3 divided by 4 and a 0. And here I have a 0 and 3 divided by 7. Let's see what happens. There we go. We did it. All right. All right. Let's look at a table now. Ooh, we've got a table. So let's check this table out, shall we? Let me scroll down just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So how do we find intercepts from a table? So these are your x values. These are your y values. Let's make a let's make a nice, neat little table right here. Call this your x's and your y's. You got a 1 and a 20. You got a 3 and a 15. And we have a 5 and a 10. Now, I'm going to give us, you know what, I'm going to make a little bit of space here. Because what I want to make is I want to make my x values equal to 0. And I want to make my y values equal to 0. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit of space here. Let's try this again. Because there's something you can do by hand, and then we're going to use the calculator if this if this doesn't make sense, okay? So right now, I've got a 1 and a 20. I've got a 3 and a 15. And I have a 5 and a 10. Okay. Right, so that should help us right now. You'll kind of see how your y values are going down towards zero. So what's happening right here? What's our gaps? What's happening with our y values? Looks like they're going down by 5. 20 minus 5 is 15. But your x values are going up by 2. Now if we were to try to find the slope, that's, that's basically the slope. This is the change and the y values over the change in the x value. So if this question said, hey, what's the slope of this line? You would say the change in y over the change in x is negative 5 over 2. That would be the slope. Okay. Well, what we're looking for is we're not looking for the slope. We're actually looking for the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So what is the x-intercept? It's where your y value is equal to 0. And what is the y-intercept? Where your x value is equal to 0. So what I got is I got to make my x value equal to a 0 here, and I want to make my y value equal to a 0 here. So let's go here. If I have a 1, a 3, and a 5, in this progression, looks like they're all going up by 2, so I'm going to go up by 2, and this is going to drop down 5, right? So if I take away 5, I'm left with 5. And if I go one extra step, one extra step, if I go from a 5 to a 7, I'm going to go up to a 9. Let's just keep the pattern. If I take away 5, I'm at a 0. So look right here, I've taken away a 5, gone down to 10, taken away 5, gone down to 5, take away one more 5, get down to 0. So what do I have? What's my ordered pair? 9, 0. What do you guys think that is? The x-intercept or the y-intercept? This is going to be the x-intercept. Okay. Because it's at 9 and a zero, so my y value is equal to zero, so I found it without even using the graphing calculator. Now, here it's a little bit different, a little bit harder. Check this out. If I have a three and I have a one, if I go, if I go two, if I minus two right there from this, that's going to put me at a negative one, and I don't want to be at a negative one. Up here, this would put me at a 25, so think of it this way. If I add two, negative one, plus 2 gets me to a 1, and here, look, it still follows the same pattern, right? But I actually want to find, let me erase something here, I want to find, like, between a 1 and a negative 1. That's what I want to find. I want to find this 0 between it. So I kind of need to split the difference here. So the difference between, if you think of the number line, I'm just going to draw a quick number line, maybe that'll be helpful. Okay, let's draw a quick little number line, all right? So here we go. On the number line, if I have 0, on one side we have 1, and on the other side we have a negative 1. That's like perfectly right there in the middle. But if I change this, okay, I change this. What if I have a number line? And right there, I'm trying to find the 1 in the middle, and on one side I have the number 25, 
and on the other side I have the number 20 what's this number right here in the in the middle between these well you could average them if you're not sure okay you could take those numbers right there add them together and divide by 2 which is 45 divided by 2 which gets you 22.5 so it looks like my y-intercept is going to be at 0 22.5 because that's the number right here in between a 25 and a 20. So I'm going to write 22.5 right there. So if I were to write this in slope intercept form, it would be y equals, what was my slope? Negative 5 over 2x minus, okay, not minus, sorry, plus, silly me, 45 over 2. I'm going to make something a little bit neater right here. Here we go. over 2 plus 45 over 2. Of course I forgot to put the x there. There we go. There's the x. Okay. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it in our graphing calculator. See what it looks like. Okay. There we go. Okay. Y equals negative 5 divided by 2 x plus 45 divided by 2. All right. Let's check our table. Now, when I say check our table, here's what we're going to do. We're going to check to see, does it have a 1 and a 20, a 3 and a 15, and a 5 and a 10? So let's check it. Oh, let's go all the way to 1. There we go. Sweet. 1 and a 20. That works. What's the next one? 3 and a 15. 3 and a 15. It works. And 5 and a 10. 5 and a 10. Look at that. So if you didn't see where I was talking about... So I have a couple students, they're working on x-intercepts and y-intercepts, they're doing a great job, so they're figuring things out, so that's what you hear in the background. Did you mess up? Oh, that's okay, you have a chance you can do it over again. I'll go, I'll go check it real quick. All right, I had a couple students real quick. So right now, these are our ordered pairs that we started with, if you look um, back at our original problem, all right? And so we did find the correct y-intercept and uh, Now, what can I do? I can just hit graph and see where it hits the x-axis. Now, 
you really want to know. You can't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You want to make sure. Let's say for Jesus, let's say it's somewhere here you weren't sure what the fraction is. You can still calculate the zero by doing this. Second, trace. And you're going to calculate the zero. You just have to establish some boundaries. So right here, I know I'm between a negative eight. Zero. Then my y intercepts at zero. And I'm going to type in 22.5. Hopefully it, it will accept my uh, decimal and not reject me. Yay, I'm not rejected. Isn't that awesome, Tristan, that I'm not rejected? He's coming in to take a quiz. Good job for you. Have a good day.